Guys, today we're talking about Lowe's. Now, they recently reported earnings. The stock is up. They're crushed earnings, which is good. So at the time of recording this video, the stock price is currently at $218 and it's hovering around there, up 4% from uh, its well-received earnings. So today in this video, we're gonna do an intrinsic value calculation of what we should be paying for Lowe's, and as well as just go through the numbers of this uh, hardware company. So if you don't know what Lowe's does, they are pretty much a home improvement um, company. Uh, their main competitor is obviously Home Depot, and they, if you're doing renovations, it's pretty much the go-to place. I've actually just went to Lowe's the other day. We're doing renovations here at my house, and um, I mean, I like the company. So. With Lowe's here, I have it loaded up in the stock research app. If you want to learn how to use this tool, you can go over to leodeleo.com. Links in the description box below. Seven day free trial for this amazing screening software. So loading Lowe's up here on and its profile, it is ranked a seven out of 10. Now, if you're new to the channel, I talk about this financial valuations uh, sheet or section a lot. And what this section does is takes a look at the company's financial statements. So their income statements, cash flow statements, and balance sheets, and it gives it a grade out of 10. So with Lowe's, we're ranking this, com this company at seven out of 10. We're going to go through those numbers right now and those different categories and see what they're doing right and what they are doing wrong. So with Lowe's, the points where they're getting deducted are in some, and uh, it's not the worst. But the PE ratio is on average, five year average is sitting at 23.02. We wanna to try to find companies that are trading at 22.5 for the PE ratio or lower. Now what that would indicate to us is that it's not trading at a premium. 23 is actually not that bad. And with the trailing 12 months currently sitting at 16.49, you know what, it's, it's pretty much it's pretty much there. It's not trading so much at a premium, at least anymore. And on five year averages, that's forgivable. 23 is not the, not the worst. The current ratio, they're not getting any points here because it's at 1.11. Now, not saying that 1.11 is a bad score, but ideally we wanna find companies that have a current ratio of 1.5 or higher. And uh, what that would indicate to us is that they have enough assets on hand to cover their liabilities with some extra margin of safety. So in the case of Lowe's, a one-to-one -one ratio isn't the worst thing. A one-to-one -one ratio just means that they have equal number of assets to liabilities. That 0.5 is just that extra margin in case they have to liquidate. And uh, let's say in uncertain economic times like we're in right now, that would help just give a little bit more of a buffer. Now their debt to equity is awkwardly low. It's, I don't know, it shouldn't be getting a point. Maybe the software is just glitching at this point, but it's negative 578.90. So, I gotta do some further investigation with that number. It could just be not uh, properly updated. But if the number is negative, that means they have like literally no debt and it's just all equity on the on the company. I gotta take a look at what that means. Um, so it could just be re misrepresenting that they are just they are just funneling their money through equity. And if they aren't and they are taking on debt and this number is actually supposed to be positive, that is bad. So I'll leave this as a zero for now. Uh, I'll also just investigate this going further uh, in another update. Now, what is Lowe's doing right? So let's say three things off the board, they're not doing entirely right. Uh, two of these I could potentially forgive, but what they are doing right is a lot. So the return on equity is high, sitting at 114%. That's amazing. We want to see uh, companies have a 15% return on equity or higher. The only gripe with this is in the trailing 12 months, it's in the negatives. So on average, it's been positive, but trailing 12 months, not looking too hot. So just keep that in the back of your heads. Now their EPS growth is up over the last five years. So that's amazing to see. We want to see improvements in EPS growth. And what I love to see, if you just take a sidestep over to this section here, the, the company metrics, where you're able to compare the five year averages to the 12 months. I love seeing a low PE ratio with a higher EPS ratio compared to the five year average. See, look at that five year average EPS is 6.45 and at 12 months, it's 12.73. So we are seeing an improvement and with a lower uh, P ratio, you are getting this company more so, you're not paying so much of a premium and you're getting a higher EPS. That is great. Now, back to the financial valuations. They are buying back shares, which is great. So they're decreasing dilution. That is super important. We wanna find companies that are buying back shares and not adding more shares onto the pile. So they're doing that. Their net income is up 
the free cash flow is up, the revenue growth is up. And you know, I'm a huge fan of that trifecta because that is pretty much the trifecta of any any company and what we want to see. And as well as the return on invested capital average is incredibly high, sitting at 31.47. They know how to flip equity. This is important. These are important numbers. So this is a pretty solid score. This is a seven out of 10. So what does that scream to me? Well, on the financial statements section of things, Lowe's is a pretty solid business. And to me, I want to try to find companies that are around the seven to eight mark uh, and higher, obviously, if I can find a 10 out of 10 company, which is very, very rare, that would indicate to me they're doing a lot of things right. But as I said, the P ratio is something I can forgive as we go forward, because considering it is lower right now. And the current ratio, even though it's not at that 1.5 mark, it's not the worst. But with the uncertain economic times that are that are ahead, we want to find companies that have that little bit of a buffer just so we can weather the storm a little bit better. And uh, debt to equity, I got to figure out what's going on in here, because if this is a positive number, that is incredibly bad, terrible. But I, I don't think so. Now, in the company metrics, we're seeing an increase in free cash flow. On average, we are at $5.9 billion. And on, on 12 months, it's currently at $7.52 billion. That is phenomenal. We also pay out a dividend, which is 1.70. And this is a dividend aristocrat. So they've been consistently upping the dividend every single year. And they pay out with this payout of 1.70. That's $2 billion of the free cash flow going towards a dividend. So on average, you got 5.9 you know, call that two, two point, call it, call it $6 billion of free cash flow. Two of those $2 billion are going out to free cash, uh, to their dividends. You know, you're left with $4 billion to reinvest into the business, buy back shares, do a lot of other things. So this is important. The dividend is safe because you ultimately want to find companies that have enough free cash flow on hand on average to pay out these dividends. Any company that is not doing that, that's an incredible risk. So just keep that in the back of your minds, folks. As well as the return on invested capital average is on the 12 months higher than the than their five year average, they are doing a lot of things right. Lowe's is is quickly gaining a lot of respect from me. I've never analyzed this company before, so from a numerics perspective, I'm enjoying this company a lot. Now, as I said earlier, we are going to find the intrinsic value of Lowe's. So we'll step down over to the price analysis section here. And if you are enjoying this video so far, folks. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. This software that allows me to screen companies is it has a seven day free trial to cancel at any time. Follow the link in the descri description box below. And if you want to see a company analyzed, write it down in the comment section. So with Lowe's price analysis section here, what I do here, folks, is I'm doing a 10 year analysis. And these are three different evaluations that I'm taking a look at. So I have a conservative, moderate and aggressive categories here. With the historic numbers that they've done over the last five, uh, last ten years. So I'm gonna play within this sandbox, and, and I filled out all these lovely boxes with these numbers to talk about what they might potentially do over the next ten years. So I'm trying to stay as conservative but realistic as possible. So I kept the revenue growth six, seven, and eight percent. I'm not exceeding their five-year averages there, staying below the one year because. Here's the thing, folks, as we approach a recession, people are going to probably be spending a lot less money and we have uh, no idea how long this recession may last. So they're not likely going to be doing any home renovations. So we should assume a slower revenue growth over the next couple of years. Not saying it's going to be permanent, but we want to give ourselves that margin of safety. Profit margin, I'm sticking within. I think they can hit these numbers five, five and a half and six based off what we've shown here in the historic numbers same thing with our free cash flow margin and with our price of free cash flow and pe ratio as i said 22 and a half is what we want to find for a pe ratio and underneath 20 is ideal for our price to free cash flow so my magic numbers i find are 14 16 and 18 especially with a company that's in the 129 billion dollar market cap range i feel like this makes the most amount of sense so you're not paying overpaying for a premium and obviously these numbers are for the end of the 10 year cycle. So currently price of free cash flow is at 18.49 and I believe it's going to be a larger company. 18 may be a little bit uh, aggressive. These numbers I feel like makes the most amount of sense. So I'm going to do 14, 16 and 18. This is my uh, unicorn wish list as well as with a PE ratio. Same thing. I'm going to, that's my, that, that number 18 is 
a wish list number uh, in the future. Desired return, 13%. We're going to click calculate, and the software is going to load up all these numbers, and it's going to spit out nine different calculations, find the average of all of these, and then find out what we should be paying for um, this company today. Current price, at the time of recording this video, $217.88. Let's see what we got. Okay. So, it almost checks out here, actually, on the moderate average. $217.77, the, the stock price did change. However, the average calculation comes out to be $221.14. So, at the time of recording this video, Lowe's is essentially a fair valued company. Now, what would the next steps be? Well, like, I'm not too huge into renovations. I'm not too huge in like whether Lowe's is better or Home Depot. I will do another video on Home Depot to, to try to contrast to compare the two because they are very similar companies. They are competitors. Now, what do I have to say about this? Well, the stock price is jumping up and, uh, with obviously their earnings increase. And if you look at the 52 week spread, we did hit a low of $170 and a high of 263. So what can I assume here? Well, even though it's trading a fair value and I can, that's assuming a 13% return, I would wait for this company's price to eventually fall lower. And I feel like we're going to probably see like the excitement behind the earnings call will die down. And as people start sp spending less and saving more, um, as interest rates, rates keep rising and inflation obviously is super sky high. I feel like once we hit a recession, like a full blown recession, you'll see the stock price go down a lot now because obviously people are not going to be shopping at lows, but that might be in a great opportunity to pick up this business because people are always going to want to do renovations in the future. They just might slow down once they have to keep their money in their pockets. But once the economy is back and running up again, this is a company to probably hold for the long term as well as their their dividend is pretty secure so if you are an investor that likes to shop for dividends this is a company that's going to pay, keep paying out a dividend year over year and as long as the free cash flow stays above this uh, i guess above four billion dollars which it seems to have been doing over the last five years then uh this might be one to hold for the long term if you don't care about buying this company at the current price right now. For me, I want to get a company at a good deal, so I'm going to wait to have a little bit more of a margin of safety. Ideally, if I can get it between my conservative average and my moderate average, that makes the most amount of sense for me. Anyways, folks, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think about this evaluation. Write it down in the comment section below. As I said, this tool that I have in front of me, if you want to use it, seven day free trials. I'm only scratching the surface. We have 10 years of bank statements from the cash flow statements, income statements, and financial statements, as well as if you want to see everything from a visual perspective, then go over to our chart section so you can see everything nice and clear. See how the shares outstanding are going down, total assets versus liabilities, and, uh, and top institutional holders how it's performed against spy so something to consider it's a phenomenal piece of software here let me know what you think and i will see you in the next one thank you so much for watching